There are so many high chairs out there that range in price from extremely cheap to extremely expensive, but not all high chairs are great for babies. As a pediatric occupational therapist, I know that when you choose the wrong high chair, it can lead to babies who are fussy eaters, meal times that are extremely stressful, and babies who simply will not sit still. So to ensure that you choose a high chair that's best for your baby, I'm going to share with you six key questions that you should ask yourself when looking at buying a high chair. But before we do, make sure you click on that free PDF document in the description box below which covers the developmental milestones you can be expecting in your baby's first year of life. This will give you an invaluable peace of mind as you'll know what to expect and when to be concerned. Also, if you want to make parenting significantly easier, make sure you start now by subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell where you'll learn the tips and tricks I've learned over the last 10 years practicing as a pediatric occupational therapist and being a mum to two children. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, does the high chair have an adjustable footrest? A footrest on a high chair is extremely important because at six months of age, your baby is not yet able to sit for a long period of time and that footrest gives them the postural stability they need to sit for a longer period of time. An ability to use a footrest on a high chair is going to be extremely important at six months of age and in future years of using that high chair. There are some high chairs out there that don't even provide footrest support like the IKEA Antelope high chair or there's high chairs with semi-adjustable footrest support where you can move the footrest into three different slots as your baby gets bigger. I find that a typically a six month old, seven and even eight month old generally can't reach that first foot rest. So they're not actually getting any foot support. Then you have high chairs that have foot rest with, which have extreme adjustability, like the Stokey Trip Trap chair, which has multiple different slots, which ensures that a baby at six months of age will have that foot support straight away. Now the Stokey Trip Trap high chair is a high chair that I think is the best out there and I do recommend it to parents and I use it at home with my children. If you want to know why then click on the link above where I go into more detail about the benefits of the Stokey Trip Trap chair. The second question you want to ask is does the high chair have the ability to accommodate a growing baby and toddler? Now what I mean by that is you want to check the overall weight capacity of the high chair. So some high chairs have a weight capacity which is quite low like like the IKEA Antelope high chair, which has a weight capacity of 15 kilos or 33 pounds. Now my two-year-old son is already at 15 kilos, so technically he wouldn't be able to use that high chair, and I'd then have to go and purchase another high chair. Or you can get high chairs that have a higher weight capacity, like the Stokey Trip Trap high chair, which has a weight capacity of 110 kilograms or 242 pounds, which is huge. Your baby and toddler and child is never gonna reach this. So that seating system will last from um, a six month old baby all the way into adulthood. The other thing I look at when looking at the ability to grow is the ability to have that adjustable footrest and the adjustable seat height. So you want a high chair where you can adjust those levels so that as your baby grows, you can lower that footrest and that seat height if required so that they'll always have the ideal seating position for meal times. The third question I want to ask is, is the high chair going to be easy to clean? Meal times are going to be extremely messy. They're going to be messy when your baby's six months of age, when they're one, and when they're two and three. What we want to encourage is a messy meal time, and that's because we know that babies who play with their food and touch and interact with their food are less likely to be fussy eaters and are going to eat a higher variety of food. So we want to embrace the mess. So you want a high chair that is going to be really easy to clean. Otherwise, it's going to be a very stressful experience for you. So high chairs that are generally easier to clean are those that are made of plastic or wood and they don't have any kind of covers on it. So you can simply wipe down that material, that plastic or the wood, and then you've finished cleaning the high chair. The ones that have a plastic cover over it, yes, they're wipeable, but food tends to get caught in the creases of the covers and also in the little slits where the harnesses are thread through the covers. So it's really difficult to clean. The fourth question you want to ask is, when my baby is sitting in the high chair, are they able to sit at the dining table and eat with the family? 
Again, we know that eating with the family during mealtimes is really important because it shows the babies how to eat the food because we are eating them ourselves and we're showing them what to do with the food in our mouth. We're also showing the babies that the food is safe because we're eating it as well. And this all results in babies who are less likely to be fussy eaters and will eat a variety of food. So having a high chair which can go straight up to the dining table is perfect. There are high chairs that come with trays which you can remove and then the high chair can just slide up to the dining table. But if that isn't able to occur, then that high chair I would say is not ideal because they have to use that tray. The other added benefit of being able to use the dining table instead of a tray is that it's easier to clean up because you simply just wipe the dining table versus needing to clean that tray. The fifth question you want to ask is does the high chair have a harness? Now a harness is important in a high chair because it ensures your baby's safety. They're always meant to be supervised when using the high chair. You shouldn't be leaving a baby when they're in the high chair, but it just prevents them from being able to climb out of the high chair and topple over. What you can look at is with high chairs, there's two different types. You've got that five point harness, which is the safest option. So it goes over the shoulders, around the hips, and then there's a strap that comes up between the legs. That's a safer harness, the best harness available, but it is more tricky to use. And then you've got the three point harness, which is a harness that just goes around the waist and up between the legs. Parents do find that easier to use, which might be something you want to consider. I would generally lean towards the five point harness. And if a high chair that you're looking at doesn't have a harness at all, then I would think that that high chair isn't necessarily the safest option. Now, the sixth question you want to ask yourself is whether or not the high chair is affordable for you. Now you do have a variety of costs for high chairs. There are cheaper versions and more expensive versions. Personally, I bought the Troop Trap chair for my first child and for my second child, I bought a Mocha because it's slightly cheaper but it has the same features of the Troop Trap chair. But if you're looking at buying a cheaper chair, just make sure you look at the overall weight capacity of the seat and ensure that you're not going to need to buy a new chair at two years of age when your baby no longer fits that high chair because they're over the weight capacity of like say 15 kilos which then increases your overall cost of purchasing high chairs for your baby. Now you will notice when you're looking at purchasing high chairs there are additional features that you can get in the high chair. These features I do not think are required in a high chair and that is the ability to recline the high chair simply because at six months of age when you're first introducing solids, babies should be upright in their seat or slightly off upright. We don't want them reclined or lying back really far because that isn't a safe position to be in when eating. It's safer to be upright and then when they're upright, they're also able to use their hands well and see the food. The other feature I don't think is important in a high chair is wheels. And that's simply because I have never seen a parent wheel a high chair from one room to another. Generally, once a high chair is set up in a house, it stays in that same position every time I come and visit. So it's not being moved around. Another feature I don't think is important in a high chair is portability and that's simply because I have never moved my high chair from my house to another house. Generally if I'm going to a restaurant I'll use the high chairs there and if there's not a high chair then I would use the pram with the baby sitting upright in that pram. And the last feature I don't necessarily think is important in a high chair is the ability to fold a high chair. And that is simply because at six months of age, yes, your baby is only having solids one time a day. And after that meal time, you might fold the high chair and put it away. But by 12 months of age, your baby's going to be having meals five times a day, which means every two and a half hours they're going to be eating in the high chair. I have not seen parents fold up high chairs and put it away in between each mealtime unless space was limited. And if that was the case, then yes, looking at a high chair that has that ability to fold is important. So parents, those are the six key questions you need to ask yourself to ensure that you choose the best high chair for your baby and also some additional features in a high chair that I don't think are required. Make sure you click on that free PDF document in the description box below and hopefully I'll see you next week where I'll share more parenting tips and tricks.